Hypixel Bedwars finally released the Slumber Hotel after about a year of waiting. The main objective is to go around a complete quest and meet the owner of the hotel. And it's unlikely, are you ready to go in? But before we can see what's inside the owner's office, we must first understand how to get to that point. It all started in March 2023. <gasps> It's beautiful. The end of the year was coming around. Many people, myself included, were beginning to lose hope that this update would ever come out. So, uh, is this Bedwars update ever coming out? Until December 5th, 2023. No way. This can't be happening. Now, the main goal of the Slumber Hotel is to meet the owner. But in order to do that, you must first unlock the Slumber Hotel. And to do that, you need to collect 25 slumber tickets. Slumber tickets are almost like a new form of currency in the new Bedwars update. You get one ticket for getting a kill, 5 tickets for a final kill, 10 for breaking a bed, 24 a win, and as time goes on throughout every game played, you get 5. After speaking to Doorman Dave, he gives you a slumber wallet which can hold up to 25 slumber tickets. How convenient. So I played my first game and got enough tickets to enter the slumber hotel, but little did I know what I was getting myself into. You can now enter the slumber hotel. Nice, dude. Now when you first enter the slumber hotel, it automatically starts a quest that requires you to introduce yourself to the receptionist. When you finish talking to him, he gives you a bigger slumber wallet which can hold up to 99 slumber tickets. And he gives you your slumber inventory. Your slumber inventory is where all your items gained from completing quests will go. At first I thought this would be useless purely for cosmetic purpose, but you'll see later why that's not the case. Dude, this is such a crazy update, what the heck? After talking to Hostess Katrina, you're introduced to the Slumber Cosmetic Shop, which is pretty much just what it sounds. To buy useless cosmetics with your hard-earned slumber tickets. Now here's where the update gets interesting. By clicking the slumber milestones, you can see all kinds of perks you can unlock once a certain amount of people meet the hotel owner. This ranges anywhere from ticket multipliers to new map packs. I wandered around the hotel only to find a new quest. General Daku needed 200 milligrams of Ender Dust. Ender Dust is one of our first slumber items to add to the slumber inventory and can only be obtained by using Ender Pearls. So it should be pretty easy for me. But before I went into a game to begin gathering Ender Dust, I met John and Digos. Basically, high Pixel's version of Indiana Jones. John wanted me to help him find an old treasure map, which could be obtained by breaking various blocks around Bedwars maps such as dirt, sand, glass, and clay. I have a feeling this is the start of a beautiful friendship. And one final quest I started before entering a game was to obtain a bedsheet for Lady Sachi. Bedsheets are obtained by breaking enemy beds. When I was exploring the hotel I noticed a lot of locked doors. This is when I realized it was going to be a grind. Now when I clicked the first door I noticed that it cost 100 slumber tickets to unlock. But unfortunately, my wallet could only hold 99. If this isn't Hypixel taunting, I don't know what is. Alright, let me take out my first rush and then I have some experimenting to do. So I finally went into a game and experimented with breaking my own glass to get the treasure map for John and Digos. I have no idea if this is how this works, but I'm pretty sure I just scammed myself in the process. I hope I didn't just waste all my money. Anyway, I broke my neighbor's bed which gave me my first bed sheet. Yeah, fireball me, that'll work. Oh shoot, it actually kind of is working. Then when I got fireballed, I obtained my first ender dust. Two ender dust? However, I noticed that I got a different amount of ender dust both times I used my ender pearl, which got me thinking. I wonder if like the further away the pearl, the more ender dust you get. So I immediately got to work on an ender dust farm. I'm just gonna pearl to his face. Oh shoot, 56 ender dust. Okay, so it is the further away the pearl. If you could even call it a farm. Couldn't I just do that one more time and then, like, get more? Hold on, <laughs> wait, I think I made, I, just, I just made an ender dust farm, hold on. 56 more! Wait, hold on, couldn't I just complete the quest right now if I threw this last one? Yeah, when I said this quest was gonna be easy for me to complete, I meant it. Anyway, I took the dub and returned to hub and gave General Duncan my ender dust. In return, he gave me imperial leather, which could be used to upgrade your wallet. Dude, he said time to take things up a notch. I get it, cause yeah, notch oh, yeah. made Minecraft. Not everything's a fun, man. Nice, dude, I did it. I can now hold up to 500 tickets. I finally obtained 100 tickets to unlock my very first door. For some reason, I started with door 3, okay? I don't know why. In fact, I don't even think I was supposed to be back there yet because it didn't even let me start the quest. So instead, I just went into a different game and found the lost treasure. <gasps> what is this? Yeah. Lost treasure? I guess after this game, I'll try it out. When I returned it to John and Digos, he rewarded me with a trusty rope, which is probably a surprise tool we could use for later. John then moved to a different location and had me embark on another journey, which was getting him a new hammer. I then went back into door 3 to investigate the Oasis Spirit and she sent me on a quest to get 250 Dreamer Soul Fragments, which is the harder way of saying 250 Void Kills. This is when I realized what I got myself into. Before going into a game, I unlocked doors number 1 and 2, which gave me some more context as how I was supposed to help John and Digos with this hammer. In fact, this dude's name is literally Hammer, which was oddly convenient. He wanted me to collect 100 silver coins, which you could obtain by buying things in the shop. 
Oh, that's cool. They added cash back to Bed Wars. Behind door two, I met King Flood, and he only wanted 10 comfy pillows, and it's missing amulet. At the time, I wasn't sure about the amulet, but the comfy pillows could be obtained by collecting enemy gens. At this point, I had a few quests activated, and they all seemed like they were linked, so if I could complete one, I could complete them all. So I made a lot of purchases from the shopkeeper, which required a lot of resources. So I went to enemy bases to not only collect resources, but to also take their comfy pillows and return them to my shopkeeper. After enough resource gathering, I finally had enough iron to get a hundred silver coins. I gave the silver coins to Hammer expecting him to give me a hammer in return, but instead he gave me the hammer mold, which is literally just the mold of a hammer. So I brought it to the blacksmith so he could turn it into a hammer, but instead he gave me a whole shopping list of items he needed to create this hammer. 500 iron nuggets, oasis water, the hammer mold, the king's amulet, and a gold ticket. So pretty much I just had to complete every quest I already started. Meanwhile in the kitchen, I was able to start another easy quest with Chef Bucky. He needed 30 ender dust and 10 dreamer soul fragments. I started knocking out a few of the easier items to get, such as the golden ticket. In order to get a golden ticket, you just need to bring 10 bed sheets to the laundry guy and he'll give you the ticket in exchange. I gave the golden ticket and the hammer mold to the blacksmith, but in order to get the rest, I needed to complete more quests. So I collected the remaining comfy pillows and returned them to King Flood. But I was still missing the amulet. I found the amulet on the ground behind door 3 and brought it back to King Flood. And to my surprise, he let me keep it. So instead I just brought it to the blacksmith immediately after along with all the nuggets he needed which only left me with the oasis wider to obtain. Well I guess I gotta get a lot of void kills now. So I did what any normal bedwars player would do. I set up a void kill noob farm. But don't worry I didn't farm them all the way to bed destruction. I broke their bed two seconds before so I still get the bed sheet. Man, I'm such a horrible person. Damn, I got 70 from that game, dude. I got 70 soul fragments. Surely 70 was enough void kills to push me over the 250 mark, right? What? But I... But hold on. Okay, I, I kind of deserved that. After winning one more time, I finally had 250 void kills, which allowed me to get the Oasis water. I'm so good at Minecraft. I should not have won that game. Yes, Enchanted Oasis water. Thank you. Do not waste it. I am going to go waste it. So I went and gave the blacksmith the oasis water so we could craft a hammer for John and Digos. Oh, nice dude. As soon as he finished, I went to John and gave him the hammer. John and Digos then upgraded my slumber wallet to hold up to 5,000 tickets. This also gave me a slumber multiplier which gave me 50% more slumber tickets. This should make life a little easier. There's some more quests right here. Dang, where'd he, where'd he go? So basically, to sum it all up, Bimmy accused Jimmy of cheating in a game of checkers. This resulted in Bimmy breaking the table in which they were playing on, so Jimmy sent me on a side quest to get some new items to help him fix it. In order to fix the table, we needed 500 slumber tickets, 20 spare wool cables, and 50 tokens of ferocity. You can obtain the wool cables by breaking enemy wool, and the tokens from getting any kind of kill. So before I started, I gave Jimmy the slumber tickets, and I headed straight into a game. Might as well get the wool while I'm here. So I gave Jimmy the wool cables and immediately got back to farming kills. Watch out. Man, they almost <laughs> did two hearts of damage to me. Too hard to I'm such a good person. Man, lovely October is having a horrible December. <laughs> yeah. To say this was overkill is an understatement. You now what? Nope. <laughs> he has blocks. No. No. I hit him in the void! Nah. <laughs> anyway, I gave the 50 tokens back to Jimmy, and he immediately fixed the table. I found out after that if you bring 20 iron nuggets and 20 silver coins to apprentice blacksmith Roberto, he'll give you 50 slumber tickets in exchange. And since it was a repeatable quest, we basically made a slumber ticket farm. So I farmed my way to the next door. I unlocked door 4, which led me into this blank canvas of a room. Uh, whoa, this is a cool freaking room. What the heck? It looks like build battle almost, or like housing. Lumber bed boys. This is housing law. What the heck? Tell me I didn't say it looks like housing, bro. Anyway, after speaking to Hermes, she wanted me to collect 15 Time Worn Mystery Boxes, which are just obtained by completing any Benwars game. So since most people just disconnect after the first rush destroys their bed, this is probably where a lot of people got stuck. After completing a few games, I ended up with plenty of iron and plenty of silver coins, so I exchanged them for more slumber tickets to unlock more doors. Alright, I have enough for the next three doors, assuming they all cost a thousand. And behind door five, I was pleasantly surprised with a knockoff Skyblock. The Skyblock player needed 200 Ender Dust, which I just happened to have on hand, so I exchanged it for this Ender Dust minion. Similar to a Skyblock minion, this guy literally just farms Ender Dust. Dude, we just started playing Skyblock in Bed Wars. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> crazy. Actually, actually, that's actually hecka cool. Then behind door six, I unknowingly entered a quiz show. Win the quiz show. Jacobsfield, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. 
Why is it called Bed Wars? Because there are beds. Uh, correct. New question. Why is it called Sky Wars? Because it's in the sky. That's right. And you win this car. Dude, I'm gonna win a car. Okay, wait. Where is Jerry? Yeah. Dude. The car is mine. And just like that, I won a car. And this is when we discovered the owner's office. It's 40,000. Yeah. Oh, 40,000? Damn. I mean, it's, it's a lot, but like, you could get it theoretically without needing to upgrade your wallet. Oh, yeah. It was locked behind a 40,000 slumber ticket paywall. We'll come back to that later. And behind door 7, we entered Rotham City and met up with a rat man. Rat man needed 5 comfy pillows, 4 sets of bed sheets, 200 iron nuggets, 20 spare wool cables, and a car spark plug. I just so happened to have almost all of those items. How convenient. I was able to give Ratman everything he needed except for the car spark plug. I thought I already had it at this point from winning the quiz show, but apparently you actually have to find the car you already won. Where's my freaking car, jerk? I won. <laughs> I almost didn't even notice it right in front of the hotel because it looks like the kind of car I would build after my first month of ever playing Minecraft. <laughs> Dude, this is my car? Dude, yeah. it actually was my car. I got the spark plug. Good job, build team. I gave the spark plug to Ratman in exchange for a Ratman mask, so I can also pretend to be a superhero that doesn't exist. This could be a surprise tool we could use for later. Behind door 8, we entered an arcade with only one player, but little did we know that this one player would be the key to everything. So this arcade player has a repeatable quest, where you give him 5 iron nuggets and he'll give you 50 slumber tickets in exchange. It costs 5 and it gives you 50. Dude, so it's just like the other one but better? Yeah. So I farmed more slumber tickets until I could unlock the next few doors. Alright, I'm gonna go see what's the next door. However, door 9 required a few extra items to get inside, such as Moonstone Nugget, Faded Blitz Star, Lump of Dwarven Mithril, and a block of Mega Walls Obsidian. I guess we'll just hold off on that for now. So I figured the best way to obtain these items was to start some other quests around the hotel. So I met up with Hammer again and he asked me to get a kill using a silver blade in a game of Bed Wars. And CEO wanted me to obtain 10 proof of success, which you could just get by winning any Bed Wars game. So I started the first game with a silver blade in mind. Okay, so I gotta try to get a kill with an iron sword. I'm gonna see if that works. No, I can't imagine a silver blade is anything else. <laughs> And to my surprise, it was an actual item. Oh wait, no, it is something else. It's a, I have what a- What the heck? That's wait, like it's a, cool. doesn't work too well against humans. It wasn't even silver. Anyway, I got my kill with the blade and returned it to Hammer. Nice, dude. Meanwhile, Don Espresso over here wanted to start another quest where I had to obtain 25 gold bars. You could obtain the gold bars by having extra gold in your inventory at the end of a Bed Wars game. So we completed a game with the gold in mind, which gave me the gold bars. I didn't try to steal that with the fireball. I gave the gold bars to Don Espresso and he gave me a lump of Dwarven Mithril, one of the four items I needed to unlock door 9. So to continue the other quest, we decided to unlock door 10 and come back to door 9 after when we had the resources to open it. Behind door 10, we met up with Spaceman and he wanted us to bring him 10 nether stars, which could be obtained by winning a round of Bed Wars. We unlocked door 11 and found ourselves in Limbo. We found ourselves some Limbo dust on top of the limbo house, another surprise tool we could use for later. And finally, behind door 12, we found Jess McTurbo, and he wanted 30 iron nuggets, 3 emerald shards, and 100 spare wool cables. So I gave him my iron, and then we went to a game to farm the wool cables. You know what we could do? We could build the bridge under their bridge, and then break the bridge to pick up the bridge. We could. And so we did just that. It is like the smartest thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can tell my friend sounded very enthusiastic about the idea. After getting the wool cables, we went to mid to collect the emerald shards and returned everything to Jets. Now all we needed was the five nether stars. Meanwhile, by the safe, I found someone named Jeremy Jagger, who was suspiciously dressed up like someone who just escaped from prison. But, I didn't think anything of it, so I started talking to him. He wanted a variety of items, but they were all relatively easy to collect, so I gave him what I already had. This dude just told me his entire plan, and this dude doesn't even care. This guy sucks at his job. Before I obtained the last item for Jeremy Jagger, I found someone named Gambler George, and he made a bet that I couldn't win two Bedwars games in a row. This guy must be a pretty sucky gambler to think that Jakersfield can't win two times in a row. Anyway, I obtained the last diamond fragments and gave them to Jeremy, and he attempted to unlock the safe, but then Safeguard actually started doing his job and took him away. I was gonna show Gambler George who's boss, so I won the first game by the last person disconnecting. There's the first win, but it's fine because I started a second game and I also won by the last guy disconnecting. Wow, he really just disconnected from that. I returned to Gambler George and showed him that I won the bet. After winning those games, that pushed me over for the amount of proof of success I needed to talk to CEO. I also went back to return the 15 mystery boxes to Hermes. I then found this guy named Peter, and apparently he got lost on the server. He wanted to join the pit, but got stuck in bed wars, so I had to help him find his way back to the pit. I tried everything, from bringing him to the hotel entrance to joining the actual pit. Is that it? Did I, did I do it? But nothing was working. Looks like you're stuck with me for now. 
So I found this other quest with Wally that required me to give him 5 nether stars and 100 bed sheets. And then I found Bill Star and he wanted me to give him a Blitz star. But not from Blitz survival games, it was in like an actual game of Bed Wars. At a random point in the game, you'll get the coordinates to the Blitz star. Oh shoot, wait, the Blitz star. I forgot about it. Hold on, I actually kind of want to go get it. Oh shoot, there it is. So I collected the Blitz star and brought it back to my shopkeeper to keep it safe. I returned it to Bill Star and he gave me a faded Blitz Star. Another one of the four items I needed to unlock door nine. Oh shoot, I'm on like half health. I hope you. Get away from him! <laughs> yeah. How about the heck? He just came out my life. After lots more winning, we finally had 10 nether stars to give to Spaceman, and he gave me the Moonstone Nugget. I now had three of the four items to unlock door nine. But before going into another game, we decided to go back to the arcade player and farm more tickets. Dude, I have like 13,000. I bet we actually could get in the owner's office like this, dude. I then found Inspector Maya Sterling, who was a detective for a murder case. Bro, they said I'm looking sus. She gave me a whole list of clues I needed to find and where to find them at. So we found the first clue on the ambush map in doubles. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, nice. I collected the first clue and found myself in a sticky situation. They have diamond swords. We might want to get out of here. God. Hey. Damn, bro, that team is stacked. Right, right, right. ah. What the heck, bro? Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. Ah! No, 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 no. 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 That was so stupid. <laughs> that was so dumb, dude. Yeah, there was no winning in that situation. But anyway, I took the first clue back to Maya, and then I began searching for the second one on the orchard map in trios. Okay, and let's see, where is this? Oh, is that it? Murder clue, I see it. Uh, oh, yeah, I see, I see. I'm going for it. I got it. You got it. I'm still low. I'm staying up here in the gap. Ah! Come on, have a heart! Ah! I don't have blocks! <laughs> okay, I'm still alive somehow. Oh shoot, he's running. Nice, dude. I took the second clue to Maya, then found the third one in solos. I gave the third clue to Maya as well, and after I gave the third clue to Maya, Peter started acting really weird. Well, I guess that was the end of that. At this point, Swappage was in rotation for the weekly dream mode, but the fourth murder clue could only be obtained in Castle 40v40. And judging by the rotation, that was gonna be weeks. So that explains why no one's met the owner yet. So I guess we'll just come back to that one. Anyway, I finally had enough nether stars to give to Jess McTurbo, and enough to give to Wally in exchange for the Mega Walls Obsidian, which is the fourth and final item needed to unlock door 9. Behind door 9 was the Slumber Temple, and I was greeted with John and Dingo's waiting outside. He wanted me to get a hotel staff wallet, which you could get by helping more guests around the hotel. But since I had to wait to unlock more quests, I just farmed more iron for more tickets. So for the next hour, we just farmed iron in exchange for tickets, and we farmed more iron in exchange for more tickets. It was an endless cycle. What could we even buy? I guess Feather Falling 2. Might as well get Iron Forge so we could get the stuff. <laughs> buy a trap. Yeah, at this point in the game, we were pretty stacked. Dude, my inventory is already getting kind of full. Bobby, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, dude. Wait. No, I'm just gonna throw them all Average at its bed. I know, seriously. <laughs> Average Bedwars player's inventory. I'm at 28,902. After that game ended, I was only 12k tickets away from 40k, which is how much you need to unlock the owner's office. Ah, well, are you down to do it again? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> we did it again. Alright, scrub. Now the only way to get back to our base is by avoiding... <laughs> Wait, is Invis bridging where? Yeah, on the side, oh, what? on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think they are? Dude, now I have to fireball this bridge. Hold on, let me just buy like 50 fireballs real quick. Dude, they're probably so mad and they're like, bro, what the heck? I'm fireballing their bridge right now. <laughs> that means if they die, they're gonna be stuck at their base. On, I'm just gonna break like all the pieces that we place just because I can. They're bridging with endstone, so I can't fireball it. I'm pretty sure I traumatized them. Here, you want freaking 21 knockback sticks? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Time for everybody's favorite part. Exchanging for tickets. This is what Bedwars is all about. I have enough. I have 40,000. I don't know. Let's see. I just unlocked it. You ready to go in? Okay. Yeah, I went. Is that him? Oh no, it's the Sandman. You cannot talk to the Sandman. Please continue. Bro! 
Well, that was a waste of everything. Yeah, apparently Hypixel didn't even expect anyone to farm iron just to exchange for 40,000 slumber tickets in order to unlock the owner's office. Therefore, you weren't even supposed to be in that room yet. I guess they expect you to just play the game normally? That's weird. After helping combat artist Sally, I was requested to speak to the receptionist at the front desk. The owner has decided to reward you with this new wallet. Oh shoot! I don't know why he didn't just give it to me when I was in his office, but cool. So I went back to the slumber temple and gave John and Digo some unused bomb materials to get inside the temple. Behind the door, there were three tasks you have to complete added as the last line of defense. First task was everybody's favorite, parkour. After narrowly escaping the parkour by the skin of my teeth, that was the easiest parkour in my life. I had to use the Ratman mask to pursue the poisonous air. Not sure how the poisonous air was contained in that hallway, but it's fine. I made my way through the poisonous air and had to find something to render the curse of the bridge. Otherwise, it would fall. Somehow, Limbo Dust did the trick. I crossed the bridge and approached the golden figurine of the Sandman, but in order to take it, I needed something to replace it. I wonder where they got this idea from. So in order to find something to replace the figurine, I started helping other guests around the hotel to see if anyone had a solution. I gave Lester Brody 10 nether stars and collected 20 comfy pillows to give to Laundry Gal. I then gave Gizzy Moonpowder 10 diamond fragments before trading 5 emerald fragments to Villager, but none of these people were giving me what I needed, so I assumed I had to wait for Castle to come around so I could complete Maya's quest. That is until three days later when they changed the quest. It says here 151 people met the owner, what? Oh, because they made it in every dream mode now, what? So I immediately joined a game of rush mode and went to mid as fast as I can. It's gotta be somewhere here, is that it? I think that's it. Oh my god, I actually got it. I went to Maya and gave her the final murder clue. This is when the suspects appeared. After talking to the three suspects, I came to the conclusion that Felix Nevada did it. I mean, he was the only one of the three that didn't have a prefix, I don't know. Well, both of these guys have like, they have, this guy's a doctor, this guy's a lieutenant, this guy's just a dude. You know what, we're going with this. Oh my god, it was actually him, I'm so good. Maya gave me a cleaned up murder knife in exchange for solving this mystery, which just so happens to be small and shiny, just like the Sandman figurine. So I brought the knife to John and Digo's and he replaced the figurine. I quickly escaped the temple and met him back outside and then he suggested we get the owner's attention. We get the owner's attention. Yeah, I think we should get the owner attention. The owner has taken notice of you. Please speak with the hotel receptionist. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised you didn't notice me when I entered his office. The hotel receptionist upgraded my wallet to hold up to 100,000 tickets so you could unlock the owner's office the intended way. But since I already had it unlocked from what I like to call the real man method, I was able to seek the owner. I have the thing now, can I talk to him? Oh my god. I am the sand man. I help people sleep at night using magical sand. I'm sure you've heard of me, if not look it up. Okay, <laughs> I've met others like you. I'm the 182nd person to reach this room, nice. Nice. Well, that was a weird visit. Um. After his monologue, I received the Sandman figurine, the Dreamscape Victory Dance, plus 20% Slumber Ticket Multiplier, and plus 5% Bedwars XP Multiplier. So I guess that was it. I entered the hotel, helped John and Digos, conquered the temple, became a jerk, assuming I wasn't one already, and met the owner. Now there's only one thing left to do. You want to just like try hard this game so that way we could end it heck of fast? Sure. No, he proed. He proed back. Our bed's gone. Uh, he's on like full health. No, he's not. He's like on two. I got him. Nice. Let's go, dude. This freaking victory dance sucks. Yeah, that victory dance was pretty lame, but at least I have plus 5% more Bedwars XP, which actually stacks with the 5% XP perk from the tournament hall. So now I have plus 10% more XP. But if you want to see me unlock an actually cool victory dance, check out this other video where I beat every Bedwars challenge in one sitting. Or you can watch this other video where I get every Bedwars achievement in one sitting. And if this video gets 50 likes, I'll complete the Slumber Hotel in one sitting. Not even joking. If you made it this far, comment owner's field, eat a french fry, do some stuff, bye bye, peace out.